Hi friends, welcome to Truth Time for the month of June. I am so excited that you're here. As I mentioned last week in Truth Time, we are starting something all new for the summer. Every week of the summer, we're going to be meeting a new Bible hero. We're going to be taking a look into the truth of God's Word and learning about some of the amazing people throughout the Old Testament and New Testament. Each week, we will also be memorizing a verse either from their story or about who they are. So that'll be really exciting. Hi, Elizabeth. Um, I'm going to turn that off. Um, hi. I'm trying to record truth time right now. This is not not a good time for... Well, you said Bible heroes. I'm being a Bible hero. I got my theme music. I did say Bible heroes. Oh, no, correct no, no, no. about that. You mean Bible heroes. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Bible heroes, but I don't know what all of this stuff is about. Well, well, heroes have hero stuff. Okay, but you and I both know that Bible heroes don't have mm. hero stuff. Not right? even theme music? Not theme music either, no. Well, can I help anyway? You can help, but on one condition. No lightsaber. Okay. All right, so um, welcome to Truth Time, and today we're going to be meeting the first of our heroes, David. Oh. And actually, we already know a little bit about David. Yeah, he was a shepherd, wasn't he? He was a shepherd. And actually, all month, last month, we were reading David's wisdom because David wrote many of the Psalms and many of the ones that we studied, too. Yeah. Yeah. David had another job, though. Do you know what his other job was? Well, wasn't he the king of Israel for a while? Yes, in fact, he was. He served as the king of God's people for 40 years. Um, we can actually read David's story if we look in the Old Testament in the book of 1 Samuel. So let's go ahead and take a look in 1 Samuel, and we'll get started with today's passage. As we are looking for the book of 1 Samuel, we're going to look in the Old Testament, and it comes right after Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. And then we get 1 and 2 Samuel, where we can read lots and lots of things about David. So, Elizabeth, can you read our passage today? Um, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 6 through 13. When they came, they is probably Samuel in this passage. Sure, I guess I should give you some background. Whenever we jump into the middle of a chapter, it's a little hard to understand what's going on. So, um, actually, God sent Samuel to go to a man named Jesse. Jesse had lots and lots of sons. God knew that he was getting ready to pick the next king of his people, the next king of Israel. And so he needed a man that would be able to be a good king, and Jesse had lots of sons, so he was a great person to go visit. When they came, he looked on Eliab, David's oldest brother, and thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed. Uh, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look, his, look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but behold, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and get him, for he will, we will not sit down till he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and had beautiful eyes, and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise and anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. And so... I'll stand by my statement that there were no lightsabers with this Bible hero. Yeah, I guess not. So it's interesting in this story that Jesse had all these sons, and some of them were strong and tall and older than David. All of them were older than David. Well, the oldest isn't always the best choice. True. And in this case, the youngest was actually God's choice. In verse 7, it tells us that the Lord does not see what man sees, but he looks on the heart, not on the outward appearance. And so from this, we learn that, that God was interested in David, not because he was strong and powerful and mighty and had a lightsaber, but because he was someone that whose heart would follow God. As you study this week, and as you read more about David, you're going to have a chance to see lots of things in his life and lots of accounts from his life 
where he wasn't the powerful one, but it was actually God's power, God's power that equipped David to be able to do the work that God wanted him to do. So as you're reading this week, each day, you won't just have a single verse or two like we've been doing in the past, but you're going to have a longer passage. You might want to have someone read it with you or read it to you even. And each day in your journal, I want you to think about how you can illustrate the passage that we read. So today's picture might have all of Jesse's sons lined up and David out in the sheep field. Or maybe it will be um, Samuel speaking to David where he says that this is the one that the Spirit of the Lord will be upon. However you want to illustrate the account. But every day this week, you'll have another account from David's life where you can see God's power at work in his life. It wasn't anything about David that made him a hero. It was the work of God in his life that made him a hero. So I hope you'll enjoy reading about him this week. And next week, we'll come back together and meet a whole nother biblical hero. Are there lightsabers? No lightsabers. Still no lightsabers. All right, you guys have a great week. We'll see you next week.